What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, Intel launched their new Core Ultra Series 2 chips, and what I've got here is actually the Core Ultra 7 258V. It's inside of the new ZenBook S14, and this has kind of become my main laptop for the last few weeks due to performance from this new Core Ultra chip, and especially battery life. Now, I've done several videos with this chip. We've taken a look at the iGPU performance, and it's not bad for an iGPU, but I definitely wanted more out of the system, especially in kind of a docked mode situation. So what we're going to be doing today is testing out eGPU performance. I've seen a few people online with these new chips not getting great performance out of their eGPU setup, and I initially ran into the same issue, and I think it really comes down to the eGPU dock you choose to use. I've got a couple that I tested, and initially I went with one of my favorites. It's the Razer Core. So this is it right here. This has kind of been my go-to. It is Thunderbolt 3, so it's only going to run it up to 32 gigs. And it looks like it's not even running that fast over these new Thunderbolt 4 connections. We'll take a look at speeds in just a second. But the eGPU that I personally went with is the new AUSTAR AG02. This actually has USB 4 and Oculink. Uh, price on this isn't that bad. It's not too steep. It's coming in at 199 and it's got a 400 watt power supply built in. Some people would like to have a cover or a shroud like you see on that Razer Core, but this one just kind of open eGPU setup, keeping the price down. And overall, when it comes to speeds over USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 here, it's definitely beaten out that Razer Core by quite a bit. Okay, jumping right into Windows, if you're not familiar with the Series 2 Core Ultra chips, we've got that Ultra 7 258V, and with this, we get 8 cores and 8 threads. They've really cut down the core count and thread count. With this laptop by itself in the Whisper Mode profile, you can get 23 hours of video playback out of it, which is insane for an Intel chip. We've got 32 gigs of RAM with this, and we've got some really fast RAM. With these new Core Ultra chips, it's actually packaged on the CPU. It's running at 8,533 megahertz. The new Intel Arc 140V iGPU does offer a big step up from the older Arc GPU and the first generation Core Ultras. But of course, you know, when I get home and I want to plug this in, want a game at 1440p, I need something with a little more power. And this is probably overkill for an eGPU. I would recommend something like a 4060 but I've got the RTX 4070 Ti Super with 16 gigs of GDDR6. Wanted to see what we could do here, and I'll tell you, the CPU is actually keeping up pretty well, but remember, we're connecting this over Thunderbolt 4, so it's not going to be working at its full potential as if it was in a real PCIe X16 slot. This will do up to 40 gigs. To keep the power up on that CPU, I'm actually using my ASUS, and if we head into our device settings here, we do have some fan profiles, and this directly affects the uh, TDP of that CPU. Whisper, standard, performance, full speed mode. It's not going to kick that fan up at full speed all the time, only when it really needs it. And this thing doesn't get that loud, but I've seen a maximum TDP up to around 37 watts. While gaming in full speed mode here, I'd say anywhere from 28 up to 32. The main thing I wanted to take a look at here was the difference between the AUSTAR dock and that Razer Core dock, because there is a speed difference here, and to do this, I use an application called CUDA-Z. So over on the left-hand side, we've got that AUSTAR USB 4 dock. Our host to device, up to around 3,000 megabytes. Device to host, 3,600. Now over on the Razer dock, you can see that host to device is only 2,100, and device to host is only 2,700. This is an application that I've been using for a while, mainly to test out Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and USB 4 cables, because the cable can make all the difference. I've got some pretty high-end cables here, and I went through a couple of them just to see if it would make a difference, but unfortunately, using that Razer dock, which is based on Thunderbolt 3, we're seeing much slower speeds than we are with this newer USB 4 dock, and I figured this would be the case. But just to give you an idea of the performance we're losing using that Thunderbolt 3 versus the USB 4 dock, it did run a benchmark with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just to kind of give you an idea. Maxed out settings, 1440p. Only difference here is one is using that EUSTAR dock, the other is using the Razer dock. And just from the FPS counter up top, it's kind of obvious which one is which. And if we were running, let's say, synthetic benchmarks using 3D Mark, the difference isn't all that much. But when it comes to real world gaming, Using this Thunderbolt 3, we get a lot more dips, and at the end of this, 
Using the Thunderbolt 3 Razer dock, we had an average of 102 FPS. With the new USB 4 dock, we had an average of 132. I mean, that's a jump of 30 FPS there. That's a pretty significant drop, and some newer games might even get less out of using Thunderbolt 3 due to all of the technologies that need to be used through this NVIDIA card. Now, I didn't test AMD here, and if you'd like to see AMD paired up with something like this, let me know in the comments below. But I wanted to get into some benchmarks here just to show you what this thing can do with that USB 4 dock, and then we'll get right into some real-world gaming. 3D Mark Fire Strike, 27,946. And the last one here is Time Spy, coming in with a 16,156. And just to kind of give you an idea, on the iGPU with this laptop, the new Intel Arc 140V, we're around 4,100 just on the iGPU. So that's a pretty big jump. And of course, we've got that RTX 4070 Super, which is overkill, but it does offer some really great performance. First one here, 1440p, we're at very high. No DLSS, no frame gen right now. We were seeing an average of around 111 FPS. And in my opinion, this is a very well optimized game. I think they did a pretty good job, even on low end IGPUs. I've had a pretty good time with this, albeit, you know, on most of that stuff, we do need frame gen. But with this GPU, we're good to go, even over Thunderbolt 4. Next up, Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p Ultra. And I did take DLSS to quality. So there were a couple dips under with this setup here using Ultra 1440p with no DLSS. But with DLSS activated, we got an average of 73 FPS. Moving over to Forza Horizon 5, 1440p Ultra settings. And I'm pretty sure we'd be able to run this at extreme. We'd probably see averages in the mid 70s with extreme enabled. I've just had a really good time with this game and basically any RTX 4000 series, even the 4060 handles this just fine. I also tested out Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p, very high settings, getting an average of around 82 FPS, and in some cases you'll see this jump up into the 100s, and those fluctuations really come down to being connected over Thunderbolt. This isn't going to run at that stable connection, so theoretically we should be able to get 40 gig transfer speeds from the eGPU over to the system. We're in fact around 34, and in some cases it does dip down to around 28. So yeah, you will get those fluctuations with a connection like this. Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, 1440p, very high. DLSS, I had to go to quality with it, just like Cyberpunk. Believe it or not, this is actually a really hard game to run at those higher resolutions, especially if you have ray tracing maxed out. Now, ray tracing is completely off, but I'm sure we could do it with some frame generation. So it's just at very high DLSS quality, still looks great, and it's a real fun game to play. I also tested out Black Myth Wukong, just using the built-in benchmark, 1440p, high. And initially, I went into this with DLSS set at 50%. We're seeing the same kind of frame rate if we want to scale it down, but I think frame gen is the way to go, especially on an NVIDIA card like this. And at the end of this, we had an average of 108 FPS. And the final game here is one that I personally don't play, but I wanted to throw it in just to see what we could do. Fortnite, 1440p, maxed out. I actually thought we'd see a higher frame rate out of this setup. We're seeing averages of around 101 FPS, which is more than enough. I'm not complaining at all, but I just figured, you know, we'd be up in the 130s with this RTX 4070 Super Ti. So originally going into this with the Thunderbolt 3 dock, I really wasn't that impressed with the performance using an eGPU and the new Intel Core Ultra chips, but after swapping over to a much faster dock, it definitely works out pretty well. Of course, with a card like this and a real PC, a real PCIe X16 slot, we can see a lot more out of it. But like I mentioned, I mean, this has kind of turned into my main laptop right now. I carry it around everywhere with me. And while I'm on the go, I can use that Intel Arc 140V, but then when I get back to the house, I can dock this thing up and game at 1440p like you saw in this video. 
So yeah, it does work out pretty well, and I'm actually really excited about handhelds powered by this new Core Ultra Series 2 chip. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be beating out the AMD handhelds on the market, but it's still another option for people to pick up if they're looking for something powered by Intel. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this laptop, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.